So my name is Leslie Walker. I'm the independent chair of the Safeguarding Board in uh, Alaman. And what has been going on today? What's been your role? Uh, so my role uh, was to open the conference um, and my role has been to drive forward the work we've been doing uh, on vulnerable adolescents. So today we were here launching the new vulnerable adolescent strategy, um, la launching the new protocols and new ways of working, uh, the new tools that we're going to use to help assess risk and improve safety planning for children who might be at risk of exploitation on the island. How big a problem is that on the island? Because it seems to be something that's developed in the past few years more than we ever heard of it before. So is it? Is it a... Yes, we heard we heard today from Operation Yarrow, which was at the time a police based um, uh, operation um, that identified 45 young people uh, in the last uh, year who were particularly at risk of uh, exploitation. Um, we have just launched um, on the 12th of September our new daily exploitation meetings. Um, so we've identified it uh, for this week, for example, that there's nine young people who are at high risk of exploitation um, that we've put in place uh, plans to try and safeguard and protect them and to identify uh, perpetrators of that abuse, uh, to disrupt those perpetrators and to try to bring them to um, some sort of criminal uh, outcome. So this new multi-agency approach, this is more about sharing your information and making sure that people who do need to know what's going on perhaps have great have easier ways of communicating with each other is that sort of where this is yeah if I, if I just if i describe how it works in practice might be helpful so the daily exploitation meetings is where each agency brings every piece of information that they know about a child or young person um so basically putting all the jigsaw uh, pieces together about a young person that we've had a referral on that we have particular concerns about and then we try to put all that information together uh, to look at the risk we use the new tool to assess the the levels of risk high medium uh, and low and uh, then we decide the the best uh packages or interventions we would call them uh, that need to be put in place uh, to to address uh, the needs of that young person to keep them safe and as I said, a big part of that, though, is to focus on the perpetrators um, and bringing them to justice and disrupting their activities in terms of uh, both with uh, criminal exploitation in terms of mainly drugs and obviously in terms of sexual exploitation, which are both big issues on the island. Is that an issue which is based on Ireland or is it something that's based in the UK and sort of becomes onto the island? Um, well, the, the, the drugs issue, um, the extra, uh, criminal exploitation, um, I think really the, uh, that got really uncovered uh, through lockdown because the issues with criminals um, couldn't, because of the lockdown of borders, uh, couldn't get their drugs as easily onto the uh, island. And so they um, used young people and targeted young people, uh, particularly, as we say, young people that might be vulnerable. Um, and uh, we're, we're posting and sending drugs. So that, that really brought in, we knew that there was uh, levels of exploitation, but the level at which they uncovered, the levels of drug debts, the levels at which young people were being targeted, I think really came to the fore during uh, lockdown and made the Safeguarding Board and all its partners realise that we needed to work very differently if we were going to make a real impact on this issue. Just finally, after everything that you built into to today and obviously moving forward, how would you define a success in this area? Well, a success in, in this area is, is keeping children and young people safe. It's putting behind bars uh, those that are um, perpetrating this sorts of abuse. And we heard some really positive stories today about how the police have done that and a number of criminals that are actually uh, currently have been convicted and are in prison uh, for, for this sort of uh, exploitation. Uh, with with drugs and sexual exploitation, um, but we know we've got much more to do. That this is just the start of us rolling out this new way of working, and we want to test that it's been really effective in keeping children, young people safe, making a difference in their lives. Um, and we know that to do that as well, we've got to identify this very early. So we've got to identify children, young people who might have what we call adverse childhood experiences that might make them more vulnerable to the predatory behaviour of. Um, uh, those perpetrators who want to use young people for their own criminal 
uh, criminal me. It's Julie Gibney and I'm the Assistant Director of Children and Family Social Work. And um, what has been going on today? What have you been doing? Today has been the launch of the Vulnerable Adolescence Strategy and Protocol um, that we've been working on for some time and it's culminated in this conference today to educate people and share the information and the work that we've been doing on that strategy. So who's part of this? Is this like a multi-agency thing across different areas? It's a multi-agency strategy. It's um, obviously children's social care, adult social care, health, um, probation from DHA and police colleagues. And so within that, what is your role within that? My role within that original group was to support the group in developing the protocol and the strategy to ensure that we safeguard and keep safe our vulnerable young children and adolescents. Um, just going off from there, what would people say has come out of today that would be different and be sort of different from how things have gone previously? I think what's different from today is that it's a whole new approach. It's an approach that we haven't had before, certainly not a multi-agency approach. Um, people will have learned things that they won't know um, that's happening on Ireland. They'll have learned that we've got this new multi-agency protocol and process that will enable us to work together to keep children and young people safe. And they will have been able to network uh, with other agencies and professionals to see what people are doing, where things are going and what we need to do as a multi-agency group but as an island to make sure that our children and young people are safe and secure. Just how big a problem are we talking about? Is it, is it, is it difficult to sort of come to give a figure to that sort of thing or is it? I mean there are figures, I suppose it's in the context of how you look at them. We have got a number of, since um, 2020 when this became an issue, we noticed it was an issue with the closing of the borders. Um, we, we've dealt with a number of children and young people um, some of them were deemed not at risk or low risk and then we've seen numbers of medium and high risk young people who are vulnerable to this kind of exploitation increase and decrease as the two years have gone on. Um, I think the important thing to say about numbers is um, we've now got this process in place that will monitor and we'll be able to report on the work that's being done. Um, so obviously today there's been quite a number of police officers here today, what has been the police's role in this? Okay, so um, it's been, it, I've also been here, I'm, I'm the chair of the Vulnerable Adolescent Working Group, which has uh, resulted in this sort of strategy being, being written. Um, we've had a, a, a number of rank and file of the officers here today, um, and the, the purpose from the policing point of view is to see how we fit in um, to the, the role of, of, of protecting vulnerable children. How bad is the problem on the island? Um, it, one of the beauties that we've got from the island, it's we're, we are not a big borough here or a county in, in, in England or Wales. So whilst um, there are problems here with it, um, which we've identified, um, one of the things uh, or the beauty about being a small island is there's not huge, huge numbers and we usually know who the, the, the potentially vulnerable people are. So in terms of, obviously your officers are going to be in the more public sort of role in this that people see, will they see much change at that level or is it more what goes on behind that level? So? It, it's really focusing on how we work better with partner agencies, um, so the main ones being health and social care, Manx Care and, and Department of Education and there's also um, huge work that uh, other uh, third sector professionals can, can help with um, at, at appropriate times. Uh, from your point of view what would be a success from this? Um, that we identify people who um, are potentially vulnerable and could spiral out of control into criminality or at worst case death, um, we can identify them at an earlier stage and take appropriate uh, action and intervention for them. In terms um, of success, with working with these different agencies and how that feeds into it, is this also as much as one of these things that may not be seen today or tomorrow but it'll be years down the line, this can be judged? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's still lots and lots of work to be done. We've got um, the, there's the, the, there's um, a lot of work that needs to, to carry on. And, and as a result of today, um, there's been some excellent uh, suggestions within the uh, the conference, which we're going to try and further, such as um, having clear reporting mechanisms in for members of the public if they're concerned about someone and about vulnerability of a young person, or indeed an ad a vulnerable ad an adult. Um, and um, I, I actually think it will be something on a, on a long-term thing, but I think we'll have some short-term, um, really short-term benefits as well. 
just finally, when we talk about exploitation, because it's sort of a word that has been used a lot, or just in time we've been here, what are we talking about exactly? You're talking about um, people being exploited criminally, um, and that might be to um, receive drugs, um, to, to uh, transport drugs to an address, travel to England, um, to, tr um, to, to bring cash back, for example. Um, and there's also uh, sexual exploitation as well, um, where uh, that can be um, that, that that can be sort of identified, uh, and, and and when I say prevalent, it, it, it you know it goes on on the island, and it's just being alive to it. It's been able to share information with our um, with our partners, uh, and and coming up with a in an essence a plan about how we're going to try and deal with it.